Well, I have a little trouble now and then, but that's because I'm getting old. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender! The final words of famous people frequently reveal a great deal about them, including their feelings and thoughts as they near the end of an incredible life. These parting remarks, which range from perceptive insights to emotional sentiments, provide an enthralling window into the private lives of some of history's most renowned individuals. Join us as we reveal the most unbelievable things famous people said on their deathbeds. Number 20. Bob Marley Bob Marley, the iconic artist, left powerful words for his son before passing away. Despite being a global sensation, Marley's final words were not about fame or wealth, but about the fundamental meaning of life. As he lay dying of illness in a Miami hospital, Marley's nine-year-old son Stephen heard his father declare, money can't buy life. His final statements demonstrated Marley's knowledge and perspective on what is really important. Rita Marley, Marley's wife, also shared a heart-touching moment with him during his final days. Marley consoled her as she sang an old hymn, God will take care of you, with tears flowing down her cheeks, encouraging her to keep singing and not cry. His remarks represented his power and desire to lift those he cared about, even in his most vulnerable moments. Another son, Ziggy Marley, who later became a well-known singer, remembered his father's final words to him. On your way up, take me up. On your way down, don't let me down. These remarks conveyed a tremendous sense of responsibility, encouraging Ziggy to remember his father's teachings and apply them in his own life. Number 19. Charlotte Bronte The great author, Charlotte Bronte, spent a lovely honeymoon in Ireland after being married to Arthur Bell Nichols. Nevertheless, in January 1855, she started to get sick again. She experienced stomach discomfort and was always unwell. However, her doctor believed it was similar to morning sickness, but the feeling didn't go away. Charlotte became worse. She got radically thin and spent most of her time just lying in bed. She made her will in February, being aware it was quite probable she might not survive longer. On March 31, 1855, as her husband was praying for her, Charlotte had this moment of clarity. She said, I'm not going to die, right? We've been quite happy. Unfortunately, that was the day she died. It had been nine months since she and her husband got married, and only three weeks until her birthday. Charlotte Bronte's last words reveal great optimism and the love of her husband. As she fell into the deepest coma, she held close the joy that they had experienced. Charlotte's spirit undoubtedly remained powerful through her illness until the very end. Number 18. Leonardo da Vinci Leonardo da Vinci, the great Italian genius, said some heartbreaking words about his life's work on his deathbed in 1519. He said, I have offended God and mankind because my work didn't reach the perfection it should have. This confession towards the art of perfection would come to define both his consistent scientific achievements and unequivocal artistic focus. Although da Vinci is most recognized for his paintings, he was a multi-dimensional person anatomist, and inventor of great scientific concepts. While he was a rather talented person, he often felt he could do better. One can clearly observe in the final statements that the writer was deeply disappointed with what his life had become, and this was an emotion that was also shared by others who saw themselves in a similar situation. His last words can be seen as a sign of his steadfast pursuit the final words of Da Vinci remind us of artistic goals and a never-ending struggle to attain them. Number 17. Oscar Wilde Oscar Wilde, a great Irish writer and comedian, was famous for his humor, which became more evident in his last days. He humorously charged his sleeplessness on his deathbed in a Paris hotel room in 1900. He said, either that wallpaper goes, or I do, stereotyping his typical demeanor, conversation, and attitude toward life. On the contrary, underneath all his cheerful and vibrant nature was the story of health problems that ended up taking his life at the age of 46. Most have assumed that Wilde was killed by syphilis that spread through his body, but modern medical science says otherwise. It was suspected that he had an ear infection that later turned out to be a cholestatoma, which took his life. 
Wilde experienced such agony and torment, but he managed to stay bright and humorous till his death. Number 16. Winston Churchill Winston Churchill, one of the most well-known figures in Great Britain's history, died due to a stroke. Before ascending to the seat of power, he was severely ill, even just a thought of working turned him away. His funeral preparation commenced 12 years ago, with Queen Elizabeth II insisting on the necessary magnitude of the event to appreciate his historical legacy. Then, his final stroke was the one that put him in a coma for around two weeks. Briefly regaining consciousness, he told his teenage boy, I'm too bored with it all. Quite unbelievably, he died on the same day as the anniversary of his father's death. However, notwithstanding his worldwide acclaim for his cynicism and sarcastic humor, his last words sent tremors to the hearts of many. Abundant in life despite his old age, he always had a vibrant personality and loved cigars and champagne. But his enthusiasm had to face the struggle of melancholia. He was the person who, throughout World War II, had been receiving medication for his depression. His dying words clearly express his dissatisfaction with life's burdens. Number 15. Michael Jackson Michael Jackson, commonly referred to as the King of Pop, left a legacy of chart-topping classics. Jackson's unexpected death stunned the globe. Sources indicate that he said, I'd like to have some milk. Please, please give me some more. He might have said this as he was struggling with insomnia and a propofol addiction, which he referred to as milk. His hectic lifestyle and struggles with addiction had a negative impact on his health. Jackson's doctor, Conrad Murray, claimed that he requested milk to induce sleep, emphasizing his need to rest despite his hard rehearsal schedule. Jackson's concern about his incapacity to function without enough sleep highlights the stress he felt in the run-up to his concerts. His heartfelt plea, just make me sleep. Doesn't matter what time I wake up, I can't function without sleep, they will have to cancel it and I don't want them to cancel it, but they will," indicates his deep concern about his performance. Jackson's vulnerability in his final hours reveals the complicated inner struggle he experienced until his death. Number 14. Malcolm X. In February 1965, in a New York City ballroom, Deeth confronted Malcolm X. Due to the mounting tensions and the loss of security, mayhem struck with the sounds of gun bullets that killed Malcolm X in front of his dear ones. In his last moments, he said, Now, now, brothers, break it up, or be cool, be calm. His words represented the cries of calm in the midst of chaos, displaying his faith no matter what. However, an act of violence answered his peaceful voice, and his killer's bullets knocked the life out of him. Malcolm X couldn't imagine anything else than fighting for justice. From the early stage of the civil rights movement, Malcolm X, a dominating figure, was under close watch and was criticized severely. Despite the fact that he was under close FBI monitoring and got frequent threats, he persisted in his beliefs and even predicted that he would die at the hands of these people. In the week leading up to his death, Malcolm X's defiance was witnessed solidifying vigorously. And then, in his final speech at Detroit, he promised with all his heart to stay on the path. His ideas about freedom and equality are alive in the minds of the people striving for it. Number 13. Amelia Earhart Amelia Earhart, a pioneering aviator born in Kansas, challenged gender stereotypes from a young age. With a passion for basketball, auto repair, and education, she set out on a quest that made her a household figure in aviation history. She made history as the first woman to fly across the Atlantic, though only as a passenger. Undeterred, she proceeded to beat records and was awarded the prestigious Distinguished Flying Cross by Congress. Despite her triumphs, Amelia Earhart's 1937 attempt to circumnavigate the globe ended tragically. During the final stage of her flight, she and her navigator, Fred Noonan, vanished over the Pacific Ocean, leaving a mysterious legacy. Efforts to locate Earhart and Noonan were unsuccessful, creating a variety of hypotheses regarding their fate. Some suspect that they crashed, while others believe the Japanese took them. However, despite decades of speculation and searches, the truth remains elusive. Before her final voyage, Earhart said some heartfelt words to her husband, expressing her intention to defy societal expectations and inspire future generations. Her words were, women must endeavor to do things that men have done. When they fail, their failure must be viewed as a challenge to others. 
These words capture her spirit of resilience and drive. Number 12. Paul Walker Paul Walker, the actor famous for the Fast and Furious film series, said his last words before the tragic vehicle accident that occurred in 2013. He was behind the wheel along with Roger Rodas when the collision took place. The car spun out, losing control, drove headfirst into a tree, and caught fire. Both Paul and Roger passed away instantly. Jim Thorpe, a close friend, wanted to save Paul from the raging fires, but the extreme heat didn't allow it. When reporters tried to learn more details, Jim told them about Paul's last words, explaining how Roger was arguing during the parking, and Paul insisted that they would take a joyride anyway. Paul's last words were, Hey boys, let's go for a drive. Jim didn't forget his friend, and he said he lived and died in a fast way. Paul loved cars and the thrill of speeding, which unfortunately became the cause of his demise. Paul's sudden and tragic death was a wake-up call for everyone worldwide, highlighting the hazards of racing. Number 11. Frank Sinatra Frank Sinatra, the iconic entertainer who defined an era, confronted death with grace and dignity. Sinatra's life exemplified doing things his way, from chart-topping tunes to his refusal to compromise his convictions. Even in death, he stayed faithful to himself. Surrounded by his loved ones, Sinatra faced his mortality with a calm resolve. Despite his worsening condition, he said only three words, I'm losing. These heartbreaking comments, given with serene acceptance, encapsulated Sinatra's grasp of the inevitability of death. Tony Opedisano, Sinatra's manager, was by his side and witnessed his final moments. Opedisano described how Sinatra's gaze met theirs as he delivered those final words, exhibiting a sense of resignation combined with profound tranquility. It was a moment that captured Sinatra's unshakable determination to face life's obstacles, even when the odds were stacked against him. Number 10. Heath Ledger Heath Ledger's last words highlight his fight against his addiction to drugs that ultimately caused his tragic death. The father of the legendary actor Kim reaffirmed this by stating that he was aware of his turbulent nature. Kim said that his son's tragic death was his own fault. He reached it for them. He created a whole universe in his brain. You cannot blame someone else because it will not change things. According to Kim, he had conflicting feelings about Heath's death. On one hand was the fatherly love that he felt for his son, but on the other hand, there was a lonely and sad truth that his son lost his life because of his own decisions. While filming The Dark Knight and The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, Ledger was under huge pressure to deliver quality acting. He often resorted to painkillers that helped him cope with the physical and psychological impact of his demanding schedule. His last words were a conversation that he was having with his sister, who disapproved of his drug dependence. He said to her, Katie, Katie, I'm all right. I know exactly what I'm doing. His detrimental behavior, owing to his addiction, led to his tragic death and caused his friends, family, and fans immense pain. Number 9. Marie Antoinette The final words of Marie Antoinette were a powerful apology, which she said when she mistakenly stepped on the foot of her executioner. She said, Pardon me, sir. I didn't mean to, the last words she uttered before approaching the guillotine. She said this while wearing a plain white dress contrasting the expensive gowns that used to be her trademark. Marie Antoinette's last testimonies depict the highest moment of humility and the greatest reminder of humanity. In spite of the depth of her predicament, she was able to maintain respect and pleasantry. Therefore, she begged forgiveness, at least for a minor offense, considering her death was imminent. It is in this last expression of her remorse that we can see how time can change for anyone, even a queen. She was a ruler whose longing for a plentiful life was finally eclipsed by the short and cruel end. This was Marie Antoinette's only moment of remorse in the last minutes before the blade fell. These last words will never be forgotten as they signify her fall from power to helplessness. Number 8. James Donald French James Donald French's final words before being executed were a caustic comment directed at the press witnesses. How's this for a headline? French fries. French's statements reflected a mix of defiance and grim humor in the face of his impending electrocution. French's case was full of unusual twists and turns, including his insistence on seeking the death punishment for the murder of his cellmate, Eddie Lee Shelton. 
Despite his intelligence, French continually sought death without appealing his conviction, finally attaining his goal after his third trial. In his closing minutes, French maintained his bravado, expressing contempt for the electric chair and ridiculing the idea that capital punishment functioned as a deterrence to crime. Instead, he regarded it as a way to eradicate individuals who could commit additional atrocities. Just before entering the death chamber, French repeated his position, saying, I am not dying for murder, I am dying for my beliefs. Moments later, he was electrocuted for 54 seconds by a full 2,300 volts. Number 7. Salvador Allende Salvador Allende's dying words, delivered in his final speech to the nation on September 11, 1973, show defiance and resolve. He said, I am confident that my sacrifice will not be in vain. He continued by saying that he has set moral standards that will serve as a reminder for future generations, punishing crime, cowardice, and treason. These phrases represent Allende's indomitable faith in his ideals and perseverance in trying to counter the bullies. As gunshots reverberated in the background and the Chilean military destroyed the presidential mansion, La Moneda, Allende spoke to the people with courage and conviction. He addressed his speech to the campesina, workers, farmers, and intellectuals who had backed his democratic socialist goal for the masses. In the face of imminent loss, Allende maintained his conviction that his sacrifice would serve as a beacon of justice and responsibility. Despite the terrible ending of the coup, Allende's words remain relevant as a reminder of the ongoing battle for democracy and social justice. His bravery in the face of injustice, as well as his dedication to the welfare of the Chilean people, have left an everlasting mark on history. Number 6. Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart's final words, said on his deathbed, were full of his signature wit and charm. I should have never switched from Scotch to Martinez. Despite his renowned status as a Hollywood celebrity and founding member of the Rat Pack, Bogart's life was cruelly cut short by esophageal cancer, which was caused by his copious drinking and smoking. However, as opposed to popular belief, those were not his last words. Bogart's actual last words were heartbreaking. As his wife, Lauren Bacall, left his bedside to retrieve their children, Bogart bid her farewell with the sweet words, goodbye kid, hurry back. These comments expressed in his final moments of awareness reflect his intense regard and love for Bacall, his lifelong and Hollywood partner. Unfortunately, by the time Bacall returned, Bogart had fallen into a coma from which he would never recover. Subscribers pick. Joan Crawford's final remarks reverberate with defiance and a stubborn unwillingness to conform to convention. Damn it! Don't ask God to help me. Her stern rebuke to those who offered prayers depicts a woman steadfast in her views, even as she approached the threshold of eternity. Crawford, an American film and television actress who lived to the age of 73, maintained her skepticism about religion till the end. Despite her deteriorating condition caused by a heart attack in 1977, she stayed committed to her beliefs, disputing the notion of divine intervention in her life. Crawford's final remarks depict her strong beliefs, indicating her steadfast determination to live life on her terms, even in the face of death. Number 5. Robert F. Kennedy Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. Juan Romero, a busboy, had the opportunity to meet his hero, Kennedy, for a second time. But when Romero reached out to shake his hand, gunshots were heard and Kennedy was hit. Is everybody okay? Everything will be fine, Kennedy said to Romero before passing out, reassuring him that, despite the gloom of the night, there was still hope for the future. Kennedy's last words clearly depict his concern for everyone around him in a scenario where his own life is at stake. This is how a true leader acts in tough situations, worrying for his people and taking care of them. However, Romero felt horrible, convinced that if he hadn't extended his hand, Kennedy would not have been shot. Over the years, he struggled with the memory of that fateful night, wondering if he could have done anything more to save Kennedy. Number 4. Charles Darwin Despite his numerous health issues, Charles Darwin confronted mortality with great courage. As he approached the end of his life, he reassured his wife, Emma, with these moving words, I am not the least terrified of death. He asked his wife to remember what a wonderful wife she had been to him. Tell all of his children to remember how kind they have been to him. In his final words, 
Darwin conveyed his gratitude and love for his family, reflecting on their compassion and support throughout his life. These final comments provide insight into Darwin's character, a man who, despite numerous medical illnesses, maintained a sense of calm and acceptance as he faced the inevitable. They illustrate his fortitude and capacity to find comfort in the links of love and camaraderie, even in the face of death. His courage in the face of death with grace and thankfulness inspires us all. Number 3. Victor Hugo Victor Hugo was more than a writer. He was a painter of words and images, depicting life's contrasts on black canvas. Black was important to his creative vision, representing both the darkness of thought and the profundity of human experience. Hugo's life was full of death and gloom, from witnessing a horrible execution as a child to mourning the devastating loss of his daughter. Despite the shadows, Hugo's work glows with rays of optimism and resilience. Hugo's painting reflected the contrast of light and darkness, representing the intricacies of human existence. Despite facing sorrow, Hugo remained a beacon of artistic vitality, delving into the depths of the human brain and emerging with renewed insight. In his final hours, Hugo, the artist of Chiaroscuro, made quite a mysterious remark, I see black light. This sentence captures the core of his creative journey, a trip through the depths of darkness to reach the brilliance within. Number 2. James Polk. James Knox. Polk was a major figure in American politics. Polk, as president, negotiated with Britain and won a war against Mexico. He committed to serve only one term and honored his promise. However, he found it difficult to be president. When he left the government, he was exhausted and sick, maybe with cholera. After leaving the White House, Polk returned to Nashville, Tennessee. Unfortunately, he did not survive long after that. He died only 103 days later. His final words were beautiful and demonstrated how much he loved his dear wife. He said, Sarah, I adore you. I love you for all eternity. In his last moments, he didn't think of anything else but his wife, Sarah. Polk was buried first in his home. However, when Sarah died, she was buried close to him. Their burial was relocated to the Tennessee Capitol grounds in Nashville when their home was demolished. Number 1. Thomas Edison Thomas Edison is the legendary inventor of a variety of wonderful things we still use today, such as light bulbs and cameras. Edison was an extremely intelligent scientist, but this was not always the case. He was a sluggish learner as a child who began speaking when he was four years old. But when he grew older, hard work and intellectual talent earned him the respect of his peers. Despite his gruff personality, he met many notable people over his lifetime. Despite his declining health, Edison continued to work from home. He died at the age of 84 due to complications of diabetes. His wife inquired whether he was hurting moments before he died, and he responded no, he was simply waiting. Then he gazed out the window and spoke, before falling into a coma from which he would never wake up. Edison murmured something to his wife. He said, it's very beautiful over there. These words depict his acceptance of death as an inevitable consequence. There is also a possibility that he saw something beautiful outside before passing away. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for more exciting ones.